Hello everyone, and I'm Autobot Sonic the Telltale Gamer. Bring latest everything Telltale Games, Transformers, and more. Now, here we are, we are finally at the end of Transformers Cyber Season 3 with the final two episodes of the season in this last review. And honestly, I gotta say, after... I've, it's it's been about probably a month, like a month and a half now since I started doing the Cyberverse reviews again. And honestly, it means it, I'm so glad I was able to go back and do these reviews over again because I've honestly had a great time re watching this series. I'm so I'm honestly kind of sad that I missed out on it back when it first came out because I honestly really really love the this series. And I'm glad that I got to see it through to the end. I mean, it's technically not the end because we got the season four special movies things that are that came out a couple months ago but the main series this is the final finale of the main series and honestly i think this episodes these two episodes i should say were great ways to end off the series so yeah this review is going to be of transformer cyber season three the final two episodes episode 25 silent strike and episode 26 the other one and I, I just don't have anything bad to say about it. these episodes are great ways to end off the the whole the season and for an extent these were supposed to be the last two episodes of the whole series until the the, the 40 minute specials came out this year so I, I could treat it as, as that this was like the actual finale of the whole series so we're gonna go ahead and see everything that makes these final two episodes just so so good. Starting off with episode 25, Silent Strike, the episode starts off with a flashback giving us a flashback that I was hoping we would get at some point this season, and that explains what happened to Megatron in between the events of when he left Cybertron back in the start of the End of the Universe event, and then when he returned at the End of the End of the Universe event with the Matrix and Astro Train and all the other, Decept all the other Insecticons. So, this flashback shows... Dead End and Astro Train on some other universe, presumably Astro Train's original universe, waiting up for Megatron to come by. When we see cut to Megatron running towards Astro Train and Dead End, carrying the Matrix leadership accompanied by three Insecticons, and he's being shot at by some unknown figures that we don't see, and this is it's not like this immediately after Megatron arrived in this universe, it's clear a little bit of time has passed, as you can see. His arm has been replaced, he's got a bunch of damage on his armor, and his fusion cannon has been upgraded as well. But he does have both of his eyes intact, and that quickly changes though, when one of the missiles that's being fired, Megatron, hits him in the back, and it causes him to, like, I think he falls forward on his face hard enough to break one eye open. And it's kind of unclear, but I guess, like, with how sort of family-friendly to a degree Cyberverse is, I know that's kind of funny considering what happened back in Season 2 with him brutally beating Starscream in your death, but... Yeah, so Megatron ends up losing his eye there, but still manages to get onto the shuttle with Astro Train, Dead End, and the rest of Insecticons, and then they leave to head back to the main universe, which explains how they got back there at the um, start of the... at the end of the end of the universe event, I should say. So after that flashback, we cut back to the main story, which is about Optimus leading a strike team into the Decepticon territory, which is located in a city created by Croaton to destroy Me Megatron's Matrix leadership, as we learned back in the last episode, Dweller in the Depths. He leads a strike team composed of himself, Bumblebee, Grimlock, Whirl, Chromia, and oddly Thunderhowl, who I was really glad to see again, considering I absolutely loved his episode in his debut episode back in um, episode 19, I believe it was, which was also called Thunderhowl. So all of them decide to head in doing a stealth mission to make their way slowly to the center of Croaton City, where Megatron is, and destroy his Matrix of Leadership. And I honestly love this little stealth section here where all the Autobots kind of get to show off a little bit as they're making their way deeper inside the city. We get this... My favorite moment, though, is definitely... I think it's one part where Thunderhowl is taking out a bunch of um, Decepticons. And he literally does, as true to his name, a Howl of Thunder that's, that basically paralyzes all of the Decepticons he howls at. Which I think is a really, really cool ability that I wish we got to see more of back in his debut episode. But it's cool that he we get to see this... Here, that's honestly like my highlight. My highlight is similar to um back in season one of this show when Star Scream actually did like a Sonic Scream attack on Optimus and Megatron. I thought that was really cool. But while Megatron, but while Optimus's group is currently making their way deeper and deeper into the city, with RC and Hot Rod providing basically like um, radio support for all of them, we cut back to Megatron who is currently inside like the the main core of Croaton with Wild Wheel. Dead End, Wild Wheel, Dead End, and I believe Skybite, all of them are basically preparing for the arrival of the other one that has been teased all the way since Enemy Line. So, Megatron talks to Skybite about the status of a, a shield around Cybertron, 
which is basically what Skybite has been creating with the whole border between all about Decepticons, and that the shield will apparently cover the entirety of the Decepticon side of Cybertron. So this kind of begs the question if maybe Me Megatron made the peace treaty with Optimus, believing that Me that the other one's forces would kill off all the Autobots and just leave Megatron able to take over Cybertron. Maybe that was a plan, or... I don't know what, because it just seems interesting that he wouldn't bother to keep protect the Autobots as well, knowing, seeming as though they would need, he would need their strength as well to take down the other one, but that's just odd in my opinion. But at the same time as well, Megatron is giving out this speech, he decides to go ahead and gather the Insecticons as well when he, when they're, he's, they're not, um, re um, checking in with him. So when he heads out of the main core Croton to go find the little ship that the Insecticons have made their own, um, the Insecticons, it, declare that basically they're just straight up leaving the, um, Cybertron because they don't think anyone can stop the other ones. They just go ahead and leave despite Megatron and Wild Wheel not wanting them to. And honestly, that's like the one thing, like I'm not going to call this a con against this episode, but it just feels kind of odd that the Insecticons are really there and just didn't do anything. The only real important thing they did this whole series was I uh, was built back in enemy line when they gave Bumblebee a little bit of trouble when he was trying to escape the city and then back in wild wild wheel where they were just enemies for wild wheel to fight that's really the only stuff that they were good for in my opinion but after Megatron watches the Insecticons leave we cut back to Laserbeak who has been spying in on the Decepticons talking this whole time so that Shadow Striker and Soundwave could be could uh, could get a better look at what they're doing. And if you remember back from the la from Rack and Ruin and Ratchet, Soundwave and Shadowstriker have been being kept in the dark as to what exactly Megatron is doing with the other one and all that. So they're looking for answers. They decide to go ahead and interrogate Dead End as to what he knows about the other one. Though Dead End refuses to talk and tries to escape from them, bumping into Optimus and his strike team in the process. And that basically blows their cover. So we get this big odd fight where Optimus, his team is fighting all the Decepticons off, and eventually it gets to the point where they just have to book it straight to the center of Croaton, where Megatron currently is. So Optimus um, heads out to with Chromia, Thunderhowl, and Bumblebee, I believe, while Grimlock and Whirl stay behind to to hold off all the about uh, the other Decepticons. And this part I have a bit of a problem with. This I will take like maybe half a point off for this, and it's that how easily Grimlock gets defeated. So. While they're running away, Whirl ends up, like, leaving Sang behind first, and he ends up getting taken out by Shadow Striker quickly, which, to be fair, it's Shadow Striker. We've established that she's a really strong character, so it makes sense she could take down Whirl easily. But literally, Grimlock just take, gets taken down even easier. Literally, a ra I think it's just a random Decepticon that just tack that just shoves Grimlock aside, knocking him over as the rest of the Decepticons try to chase after Optimus's group. And considering how much we saw Grimlock do back in Season 2 and even earlier on this season, it just seems so weird that Grimlock just gets taken down by a mere shove. And I guess you could chalk it up to him just not being like that. He was too focused on World to notice the Decepticon shoving him, but that just seems really weird to me in my opinion. I forgot to mention this as well. There's this one point where Megatron before Optimus and all the other Autobots get to him that he actually ends up going inside the mate his own matrix very similarly to how Optimus did back in Dweller in the Depths where he tries to get the um, primes of his universe's matrix for help but none of them seem to answer him so he just leaves that but there is this one brief moment where we do see the final shard of Windblade which appears to be your whole entire mind or spark inside the the um the matrix as McAdam stated back in back in Dweller in the Depths. So there is that little bit that will come into play later on in the final episode of this season, but I just wanted to point that out before we kept going. So back to um the main story, Optimus and his group, Sans, Whirl, and Grimlock managed to make their way finally to the middle of Croaton where Megatron is there with Wild Wheel, Skybite, and everyone else. And just as Mega Optimus is about to fight with Megatron, who states not to because they need to work together to take down the other one, the other one's forces start coming in, teleporting into the into the, the middle of into the area, despite Skybite having raised the shields around the entire Decepticon half of Cybertron. And here's where the big surprise comes in, as all of a sudden, several large this, like looking perfect Decepticon figures just come out of nowhere and start holding everyone at gunpoint, which marks the end of this episode. But for any of you IEW fans, you will instantly recognize that these Decepticon drones are heavily, heavily inspired off Tarn from the Mortar Meets the Eye comics. And honestly, I will admit this was something I was spoiled on 
early, uh, several months ago, or even I think like a year ago, that I knew that these Tarn-like figures were going to be in Cyberverse. And despite that though, it's so cool to see actual IDW concepts make their way into mainstream Transformers stuff. Despite the fact that these figures aren't actually Tarn, it is so cool that we actually have a reference to the IW comics in such a big way like Tarn, who was created specifically for More Than Meets the Eye and Lost Light into this, into Cyberverse. So it's really cool despite the fact that these characters aren't actually Tarn. They're pretty much all but Tarn in name, so it's really cool to see that. But anyway, that's how the episode ends with all of them being held at gunpoint. So for episode 25, Silent Strike, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. It sets up a great part 1 to the season 3 finale. I think we get some really good stealth action with Optimus' group as they're breaking into Croaton City. I especially loved Thunder Howl's little moment where he actually does a Thunder Howl on the Decepticons. Though I will say the bit with the, the Insecticons just not doing anything, just up and leaving, and then Grimlock being taken down so easily by Decepticons just rubs me the wrong way. But that's gonna be for that. We're gonna move on now to the final episode of Season 3, Episode 26, The Other One. The other one starts off immediately after the events of Silent Strike, though instead of it picking up with all the Autobots and Decepticons being cornered by the Tarn lookalikes, it actually takes place inside Megatron's Matrix of Leadership, where the last fragment of Windblade is seen trying to talk to all of the primes inside his, inside his Matrix, when all of a sudden, this universe's, uh, that, or that universe's Optimus emerges from one of these stones, similar to how McAdam did back in Dweller in the Depths, and talks to Windblade, stating that he only met her for a little bit at McAdams, which Windblade is confused by, considering that they've known each other throughout the entirety of seasons 1 and 2, and even earlier on this season. So, op the, the alternate Optimus states that he is, in fact, an Optimus from another universe, though, in order to sa um, save um, all of Cybertron, He'll, she'll have to destroy the Matrix leadership from the inside, and we'll get back to that later on this episode, which Windblade seems to be against it, but it, it just kind of contradicts what happens later on in this episode. Anyway, after that, we cut, we finally cut back to the main, main plot of Optimus and Megatron's groups both being surrounded by the Tarn lookalikes, with Optimus claiming that this is Megatron's perfect Decepticon army that he wanted to make all the way back in Seasons 1 and 2, though Megatron states that he does not... He, these are not his because they were created by the other one instead because Megatron never actually got into contact with the AllSpark. So despite that though, Thunderhowl and Skybite try to fight off all of the the Tarn lookalikes. They get easily overpowered and this fight is honestly really one-sided in terms of go going for all the um, the Tarn lookalikes against Megatron Optimus' forces. They all get their butts handed to them in this fight with especially though eventually gets to the point though where Optimus and Megatron are kind of back to back struggling each with their own copy of Tarn and they decide they're going to use the multi virtual energy and channel it out to all the other Autobots and Septicons nearby to help them take out the um the Tarns and honestly despite my grievances with the multiversal energy throughout this entire season I will give this a pass as this feels like the one time it should be used and it just kind of bothers me that I was that I'm just so exasperated from constantly seeing this energy be used throughout the season because Bumblebee used it for such mundane reasons throughout this past few episodes. It just felt awkward that he was using it for all these situations that could have been remedied in different ways. So it, it felt a little underwhelming when it was used here, but I'm not going to take points off for it here. It just felt like, I'm like, ugh. Like, okay, yeah, use the multiversal energy already. Just stop making this so difficult for yourselves. But anyway, they managed to take out that wave of Decepticons before another wave comes in, which Megatron this time, though, takes out with an unspaced gun, like a smaller version of the unspaced gun that Astro Train created back in Rack and Ruin and Ratchet. Though, speaking of Astro Train, actually, he straight up just leaves, <laughs> leaves Megatron during this when the first group of um, Tarns lookalikes came in. Astro Train just straight up dipped, stating that he was going to go scour the multiverse, just make sure not that he doesn't end up running into the other one. So, I don't know why Astro Train just left, considering that he was so adamant on helping Megatron develop a weapon to take down the other one, but it just seems odd, though, that he just goes ahead and leaves at this point. But after Megatron takes out those Decepticons with the unspaced gun, Suddenly, even more show up, and before Megatron can take those out, though, the other one finally reveals himself, and surprise, surprise, it is n none other than an alternate universe Megatron, and now, while the alternate universe Megatron isn't actually named by this in the actual show, the the toy for, the, for this character just lifts him as Megatron X, so 
for all intents and purposes, I'm going to be calling the other one Megatron X for the remainder of this video. So, when Megatron X arrives, he immediately overpowers the main Megatron and wounds him by, like, it's weird that he basically grabs Megatron's chest and basically, like, does some sort of thing with his hand where it kind of, like, sears through his chest straight to his spark chamber. That basically mortally wounds him for a bit. And it's at this point that Megatron X basically explains himself to all the other Autobots and Decepticons, stating that... Essentially, he considers himself to be the ultimate version of Megatron, and immediately I'm getting um, vibes from, as someone who plays Mega Man X a lot and is a huge fan of that series, immediately Megatron X reminds me of Sigma in that regard, especially with his mannerisms and just his, 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 his quest for power and how ruthless he is, honestly reminds me a lot of Sigma in that regard. So we essentially get Megatron X's backstory, where he states how the main Megatron was weak because he could never do what Megatron X did, and that was kill Optimus. And so we learned the backstory of Megatron X in a way I totally did not expect, and that is a flashback all the way back to the flashback scene in Season 1, Episode 6, Megatron's My Hero, which is arguably one of my favorite episodes of Cyberverse, actually. So, in one of those flashbacks, I believe it was one of the last ones before Bumblebee was got his voice box ripped out by Megatron, it was when... Optimus and Bumblebee went to go see Megatron about trying to broker peace with him one last time before the war actually began. In the original timeline back in Season 1, when Optimus said that he wouldn't go, wouldn't work with Megatron, Megatron just declared war on Optimus and the rest of the Autobots and just let them leave. In this, in Megatron X's universe, however, that played out very, very differently, where after Optimus told Megatron that he wouldn't work with him, Megatron just straight up kills Optimus. He straight up just wastes no time, shoots him right in the chest, and rips out his Matrix of Leadership in front of Bumblebee. So, honestly, Megatron X got his priorities straight, knowing that he couldn't afford to let Optimus live. So after that, apparently Megatron X just easily killed off the rest of the Autobots on Cybertron, and managed to go ahead and put together his perfect Decepticon army that he had planned for all the way back in Seasons 1 and 2. It even got to the point where he got so powerful, he even managed to destroy his universe's versions of the Quintessens before they even got a chance to take over the planet, which is really weird because I thought the Quintessens were essentially a multiversal race that they just existed across all universes. But anyway, we saw that, we see that Megatron X ended up actually killing off all the Quintessence before they even got to Cybertron, where as the, the Quintessence ship was landing at Cybertron, Megatron X used um, a snare gun to straight up just destroy the whole ship, very similar to how Megatron destroyed the Ark back at the start of this season, and that basically just explains just how prepared Megatron X is, and after killing the Quintessence, he slipped through the remains of their ship to find out that the multiverse did exist and that he would basically use the the multiversal um, technology created by the Quintessence to essentially conquer every single universe in the multiverse. And honestly, that paints Megatron X, honestly, like, listening to it more, honestly reminds me a lot, too, of Ultron and What If that just came out last year. It reminds me a lot of What If's version of Ultron as well. So, Megatron X certainly isn't playing around, and then states that he deserves to get the Matrix back from Megatron, so he straight up just uses a energy very similar to how Starscream did on Megatron and everyone else back in Season 2 with I Am The Allspark, where he essentially lifts Megatron up and forcibly rips the Matrix of Leadership out of his chest, killing him, and honestly, I think this is a pretty cool subversion that, uh, that the Cyberverse writers decide to actually kill off Megatron at the end of the show instead of Optimus as... Usually every Transformers show ends with Optimus dying, but to have Megatron be the one who dies instead, I think that's a pretty funny way of just subverting expectations. Again, I do say that it's kind of sad seeing Megatron die like this, considering just how better of a character he, he became in this latter half of Season 3, but it is cool to see that Megatron dies in such like an epic way, I want to say. But after Megatron X kills Megatron, he decides that he's going to go ahead and not just kill off all the Autobots on Cybertron, but also all the Decepticons as well, who after they try to swear their loyalty to Megatron X, he states he doesn't have need for them at all because he's already got his perfect army of Decepticons with the Tarn lookalike. So as he's ready to go ahead and kill them all with the Matrix leadership, Bumblebee though ends up snatching the Matrix leadership from Megatron X and just straight up books it out of Croaton trying to make it back to the Autobot border. And we get this really cool scene where Megatron X is chasing Bumblebee all across the the city in as he gets closer to the border, and several like several of the other Tarns are shooting at Bumblebee as well. Though he manages to get saved by Whirl, Shadow Striker, and several other Autobot Decepticons. And I gotta say, this last little bit with Bumblebee basically running away from Megatron X, I think is a great sort of final fight 
for this for this whole series and really kind of culminates that basically this story started with Bumblebee to have him being the one to try and get the, the Matrix leadership back away from Megatron X containing Windblade who basically started this series off is a cool way to bookend it in my opinion but eventually though Megatron X does catch up with Bumblebee and manages to knock him out and get the Matrix back from him and it's this point where Megatron X starts to taunt Bumblebee staying to how easily his universe's version of Bumblebee was killed back after he killed his version of Optimus and just as he's about to go ahead and kill Bumblebee Optimus though comes out and decides to fight Megatron X instead basically he's doing similarly to how he did with Starscream back at I'm the Allspark and to Starscream with Megatron back at the end of the end of the universe arc he ends up using his Matrix leadership to create like a kind of energy wave at Megatron X to try and kill him though it Quickly though, that doesn't seem to work as Megatron X uses his Matrix to fire an energy beam back at Optimus and it struggles between both of them with it, Megatron X getting more and more closer to killing Optimus in this regard until Windblade finally decides to just out of nowhere destroy the Matrix leadership from the inside which just comes out of nowhere and honestly just kind of jarring considering that the last time we saw her at the start of this episode she was against it but seemingly now she's just okay with destroying the Matrix leadership. But anyway, Windblade manages to destroy Megatron X's Matrix leadership from the inside, causing Megatron X's energy beam to stop, and therefore Optimus uses his beam to defeat Megatron X, though not kill him, but instead just put him into some sort of stasis lock of sorts. So after that, Optimus and Bumblebee get back up, stating that, they're, that Megatron X is still going to be a threat, when all of a sudden, Astro Train comes out of nowhere from another multiversal energy space bridge, stating that he is going to take um, Megatron X into his own custody by traveling the multiverse with Megatron X inside of him, basically keeping him prisoner for as long as he can. And I get that this is kind of, it just feels kind of odd that this is Megatron X's punishment, like, wow, they just straight up kill him or maybe just put him into something that seems a bit more safer than just inside Mega inside Astro Train, though it just seems odd. But anyway, after before they do that, Bumblebee gets the last memory fragment of Windblade from Megatron X's Matrix leadership, which is, of course, I believe, her spark. So after, with that now, Windblade is now completely collected. They've gotten all of her memory fragments back, and as, Meg as Astro Train leaves this universe with Megatron X, um, we cut back to Ratchet finally reawakening Windblade, where all the Autobots and even Soundwave and Shadow Striker there are all there to welcome back Windblade, and we get this really nice moment where Windblade and Bumblebee hug and honestly it's so great to see that this season ends with Bumblebee and Windblade considering that this was meant to be the final episode of, Cy of Cyberverse. It's so cool to see that this series both starts and ends with Bumblebee and Windblade and this this moment right here where Bumblebee is just so happy to see Windblade again. I really wish this was how he reacted to Hot Rod coming back earlier this season because this moment is just so sweet with Bumblebee and Windblade finally reuniting. I just wish we got that with Bumblebee and Hot Rod as well but I'm not gonna I'm not going to drag on this episode for that. Honestly, though, this was a great way to end the season, in my opinion. And if the series ended right here, I'd be okay with it. And so that was my review of Transformers Cyberverse Season 3, Episode 26, The Other One. If I had to rate this episode again, I would give it a 10 out of 10. Easily a really, really great way to finish off this season. And arguably the best season finale of all three seasons. I'd say the worst is definitely Season 2, which in my opinion, the Season 2 finale is the worst episode of Cyberverse ever. Then the season one finale, which wasn't bad, but it just wasn't perfect. And then this episode was a perfect finale, though, to not only season three, but the entire series if the, the season four episodes didn't exist. And with that, though, now that we finished all of season three of Cyberverse, it's time for me to give my review of the entirety of Transformers Cyberverse season three as a whole. If I had to rate the entirety of season three, honestly, I would probably have to give it a, a 10 out of 10, honestly. This is easily, without a doubt, the best season a cyberverse against all three and despite having some hiccups with like the earlier quintessence episodes and even um some of the filler episodes like um wow, like wow wow wheel this season has just been so much fun to watch and it's great having a perfect mix of main stuff with like the battle for cybertron arc we had all of the the earlier quintessence arc um episodes and then some light little filler episodes with um bumblebee and Optimus trying to rebuild Cybertron while also saving Wimblade at the same time. And then this last little battle with Megatron X and his forces of, like, Tarn lookalikes was just a cherry on top for this season. Honestly, my opinion is without a doubt the best season of Transformers Cyberverse. And if this was the end of the show, I, I'd be totally okay with it. But that's going to be this review, though. This is not the end, though, of my reviews of Transformers Cyberverse. We've still got two more episodes to do, and I'll be back soon with my review of Season 4, Episode 1, or you can call it the first 
part of the series finale, The Immobilizers. So if you're excited for my review of Cyberverse Season 4 or the special hour-long special movie of Cyberverse, be sure to like, comment, and of course subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Take it away, Bumblebee. Bumblebee out. And I might know what I but then you still control the past. Only you know if